Welcome back for more applications of first order differential equations. In this video we'll cover exponential decay. The differential equation dp dt equals k times p, or p prime of t equals k times p of t, models exponential decay, which means the rate of decline or decay is proportional to the population or amount and nothing else. So taking a closer look at this, this is telling us that the change of p with respect to time is equal to some constant k times our function p. And because we have exponential decay, k is going to be negative. We'll actually solve this differential equation in the first example to find our function p of t. But the only solution to this is the exponential function given here, p of t equals p sub zero times e raised to the power of kt, where p sub zero is the initial amount, k is the exponential decay rate, t is the time, and p of t is the amount after time t. And this function here should remind you of exponential decay problems that you solved in a previous algebra class. Let's take a look at our first example. Polonium 218 decays exponentially. The decay rate is 23.1% per minute and can be modeled by the differential equation dp dt equals negative 0.231 times p. So again, because we have exponential decay, notice how this derivative is equal to this constant here, which is our decay rate, times the function p. Part a, we want to find an equation that satisfies the differential equation. We're going to let p of zero equal p sub zero. Now we already know from the previous slide and from algebra that the solution to this is going to be this function here but we're actually going to verify this by solving this differential equation for part A. Part B, if 1,000 grams of polonium 218 is present at time t equals zero, how much is present after 90 seconds? And then what is the half-life of polonium 218? So let's start with our first question. We can solve this differential equation by using separation of variables. So we're first going to write this in differential form. So we would have dp, equals negative 0.231 p dt. And now we're going to divide both sides by p or multiply both sides by one over p. So we'd have one over p dp equals negative 0.231 dt. And now from here we're going to integrate both sides of the equation. The antiderivative of one over p with respect to p would be natural log absolute value of p. But since p is never going to be negative, we can just write natural log p. We'll put the constant of integration on the right side. So this is going to be equal to the antiderivative of negative 0.231 with respect to t. It's going to be negative 0.231t plus our constant of integration. Since our goal is to solve this equation for p, e raised to the power of natural log p must be equal to e raised to the power of this sum here. Looking at the left side, because this is base e and this is log base e, or natural log, this simplifies nicely to p. And because it's going to be a function of t, we can write p of t equals, now on the right side, notice how we're adding the exponents. We can write this as e to the negative 0.231t times, this would be e to the c, but e to the c is just a constant, so we're going to let e to the power of c equal the initial value p sub zero. So now we have our general solution to the given differential equation, which models the exponential decay. p of t is equal to p sub zero. Again, this is some constant which we're letting equal e to the power of c times e raised to the power of negative zero point two, three, one, t. And again, this should be the solution that we expect from our previous classes in algebra. And now we should be able to use this function to answer the two remaining questions. If 1,000 grams of polonium 218 is present at t equals zero, so they're telling us that p of zero equals 1,000, how much is present after 90 seconds? Now we need to be careful here because remember the time was given in minutes, so 90 seconds is going to be equal to 1.5 minutes. 
So we know that t is equal to 1.5. Let's go ahead and verify that if p sub zero equals 1,000, p sub zero would be 1,000. So if p of zero equals 1,000, this would have to be equal to p sub zero times e raised to the power of, well if t is zero, the exponent is zero, e to the zero is equal to one, quickly verifying that p sub zero, our initial amount would be 1,000. So now we have the particular solution, p of t must equal 1,000 times e raised to the power of negative 0.231t. And now to find how much is present after 1.5 minutes, we just need to evaluate p of 1.5. So we have 1,000 times e raised to the power of negative 0.231 times 1.5. We'll have to determine this value in the calculator. So we have 1,000 times e raised to the power of negative 0.231 times 1.5. We'll go ahead and round this to the hundredths. This would be 707.16 and the units would be grams. And then for the last question, they're asking us to determine the half-life of polonium-218. So starting with our general, so starting with our function, p of t is equal to p sub zero times e raised to the power of negative 0.231t. We can let the initial amount p sub zero equal anything. Let's go ahead and assume that it's equal to 1,000 as it was in part b. So if we start with 1,000, half-life is the amount of time it takes for half of that to decay. That means p of t would be 500 or half of 1,000. So we want to solve the equation 500 equals 1,000 times e raised to the power of negative 0.231t. So now we'll divide both sides by 1,000 to isolate the exponential part. This so simplifies to one. The left side simplifies to one half, which is always the case for half-life. And on the right side we have e raised to the power of negative 0.231t. To solve for t, we'll now take the natural log of both sides of the equation. And then we can apply the power property here. So we can move this exponent to the front of the natural log. So we have the natural log of one half must equal negative 0.231t times natural log e, but natural log e is equal to one. And we don't have to include the factor of one. So the last step here is to divide both sides by our exponential decay rate, or negative 0.231. So this simplifies to t. And on the left side, we'll go back to the calculator. So we have natural log one half, or 0.5, divided by our constant, which is negative 0.231. Remember, time is in minutes, so we'll say that the time is approximately three minutes. Now that we've determined the half-life the long way, there is a shortcut. Whenever we want to find the half-life for exponential decay, let's call it capital T, it's going to be equal to natural log one-half divided by the constant with the exponential decay rate. And if you remember, when we had exponential growth, the shortcut to determine doubling time was natural log two divided by k. I think we'll go ahead and stop here for this video. We'll take a look at a second example of exponential decay in part two.